Hi there. In a previous video, I was discussing the importance of increased cadence for improving your running form as well as a way of minimizing injuries. Today's video is going to be looking more specifically at three simple ways you can increase your cadence, in other words, leg turnover, for an increase of speed. Because after all, that's one of the things that you'll be after. Ask yourself the following question. Have you, for instance, hit a plateau in your running? Or, for argument's sake, do you feel like you're absolutely slugging while those around you simply seem to be floating by? And do you want a quick and easy way to get faster? Then working on your leg turnover or cadence might be exactly the thing that you're after. If you're wanting more detail on what cadence is and what it can do for you, have a look at my other video uh, that I've done on the subject. And to make that even easier for you, down in the description column below is a link to that video. As I mentioned in my previous video, age group athletes have in general a phenomenally low cadence while elite runners manage a foot strike rate of 180 or more per minute. So the first order of business for you will be to determine what your cadence is at the moment. And exactly how to do that is described in detail in that previous video where you'll find the link to in the description down below. Improving your cadence is not difficult at all, but it does take a certain amount of time to ingrain that new cadence, that new leg turnover as a muscle memory into your system that you can do easily on each and every one of your runs and races. As you increase your new leg turnover, give your body about six to eight weeks to adapt to this new leg turnover before you increase it another notch. The first of the simple methods that I'll be looking at for you will be the use of a metronome. Now, a metronome is a device that ticks a certain number of beats per minute, which means that if you choose the desired cadence that you want to do, and you use a metronome, you just make sure that your feet strike the ground in time to the metronome. But obviously, a metronome as a device is highly impractical to carry around with you on your next training run. So, a wonderful resource that you can be looking at is the music that you listen to while you're running. Choosing music with the right number of beats per minute. And to make that even easier, the wonderful folks down at the website called Jog Tunes have divided their music library up into tracks grouped together by beats per minute. So all you need to do is Head over to JogTunes again, I'll put a link to the website down below, and no, I'm not affiliated to them, I get no coin out of this whatsoever, but it's a wonderful resource that I use myself, and head over to them, have a look, pick the cadence that you want to hit, download the tunes that match exactly that cadence, pop them into whatever music device you're using while you're out running, and pop the earbuds in, hit the trails and be super easy to maintain your new chosen cadence. The second method that I'd say you need to use for increasing your cadence would be mental visualization. Visualize yourself running at that higher cadence. Visualize yourself how your body adapts to this new cadence, how your body naturally adapts to its better running form because you can't do a slow slug 
heel striking type of loping running action while your legs are clicking over at the high rate. Third strategy for increasing your cadence will be running in place. So stand in front of a mirror, feet about shoulder width apart, position your hands and arms as if you're running and start running in place as fast as you can. Make sure your knees are facing straight ahead while you're running in place and run in place as fast as you can for about 20 seconds then rest a minute. And during that 20 seconds count the number of times your right foot is striking the ground when you're going there as fast as you can. And you do this drill three times. 20 seconds on, minute off. 20 seconds on, minute off. 20 seconds on again. So what have you done? You've done a running in place drill where you've been doing your running. The running in place has been for a period of a minute. Count the number of times your right foot has struck the ground over the course of that minute. Double it and you'll get what your cadence is when you are actually pushing yourself to be able to be running in place at as high a cadence as you possibly can. With this drill, what you're effectively doing is teaching your body to get your feet off the ground as quickly as you possibly can. And while you're out running, it's the getting your feet off the ground quickly that translates into a higher cadence. And what's more, if you watch yourself running on the ground like that, you will notice that running in place, it is almost impossible to run in place with a heel strike. So by running in place and increasing your cadence, at the same time you're also training your body to mimic the action that's needed for running at a high cadence, which is bringing your foot strike more midfoot forefoot as opposed to heel striking which drastically slows down your cadence and your running speed. Finally, a word of caution as far as increasing your cadence is concerned go slowly. Pick a new cadence that is five to seven foot strikes a minute faster than what you're running at the moment and build yourself to that over a period of six to eight weeks. Once you've hit your new cadence uh, and you've built it over a period of six to eight weeks, then bring in a new higher cadence. Don't go from 110 foot strikes per minute for instance up to elite level of 180, 190 foot strikes per minute, you're just going to be causing yourself an injury. As with all running related training and increasing, for instance, increasing endurance, increasing speed work, all of these things are best done gradually so that your body has the opportunity to be able to adapt to the new stimuli. When you teach your body to do something new, such as riding a bicycle, or for instance as what we're doing here running at a higher cadence what you're effectively doing is creating a physiological roadmap or what I like to call muscle memory of what it feels like to operate at this new cadence in other words all the, when you're learning to ride a bike it is all the muscle memories involved with turning the pedals steering balance and all of those things, once those become automated muscle memories, you can then start doing things like looking around and enjoying the scenery around you. Until you've developed those muscle memories, it's going to require all of your concentration to maintain the pedaling, the balance, and the steering. The same thing with your new cadence, is that it's going to require a concentrated effort on your part to work on your new desired cadence until your body adapts and it becomes a muscle memory. Once it becomes a muscle memory, your body will automatically slot into that cadence when you are out running. That's it for this time. Please remember to click the like button down below and also share this video out amongst your running friends. Share the word. Also, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below and that way you'll be able to be kept up to date with 
notifications about new videos as I release them on a week-to-week -week basis. Stay safe out there. See you next time. Cheers.